Are you shopping for a home? Don't make a mistake and miss some of the key elements you should consider when doing so. I've got a list, I'm gonna share it with you today of the 12 important elements that you should look for when shopping for your home. And I'm Holly McCann, a local realtor in Orange County. Make sure you subscribe to get more great videos and more helpful hints for you with real estate and some fun local knowledge as well. So number one that's important is your budget and financing. Of course, to determine that, you usually get a pre-approval with the lender, unless you have a really clear idea um, on what you can afford and maybe you're using cash, so then that doesn't matter. But you definitely want to also take into consideration additional costs like closing costs, which are typically about 2% of your purchase price, moving expenses, and potential renovations. I've had clients that think they're okay with the house when they are moving into it, and then they get in, they're like, oh, I can't live with this, or oh, that tub is not going to work. And so it's good to have some cushion money um, for once you get in to make sure that you can handle things that you want to. Number two, location. So what's the proximity to your work? Um, if you're someone that uses public transportation, is it close to that? Schools, shopping, entertainment. What are the future development plans in the area? What's the neighborhood safety, vibe, and community culture? I recommend that you go to areas that you're considering at different times of day. So in the afternoon, it might be really different than say five or 6 p.m. when people are coming home from work. Say you're a young family that wants to have kids, um, to have friends for their kids or go hang out in the community park, check out the park um, after work hours or in the afternoon or whenever you might be frequent, frequenting it with your kids. Number three, size and layout. Of course, number of bedrooms and bathrooms you need. Sometimes it's great to be flexible on that because maybe there's a loft that can work as an office. Or maybe you do have kids and it would be too noisy for you to be able to work in a loft and you need a door uh, office with a door that closes for quiet and privacy. Um, do you want open concept versus separate rooms? Future family growth. Maybe you have parents that are going to move in with you later in life and you've got to have a downstairs bedroom for them or a single level that would accommodate that. Maybe you want to have roommates, help them pay them, have them help pay your mortgage. I have clients that have done that too. Do you need a home office or workout space? Sometimes a garage can work great for that. But if you're going to use a garage, think about insulation, um, heating and air conditioning, because maybe it would be too hot to work there in the summer or too uncomfortably cold. Number four is your home type. Um, do you want a single family home, a condo, a townhome, or multifamily property? New construction versus an older home. Now, this can also impact your loan, and there are product types in Orange County where we have single family attached homes that most people would say, well, that's a condo. Looks like a condo, but it's called single family attached. It can even be deceiving when you're looking on Zillow or Redfin and it would show up as a single family and you might think it is till you go see it in person. And you're like, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Also, we have a product type called detached condos. Those look, live and feel like a single family home. But the only reason they're called a detached condo is because the land is owned by everybody in the community. If there's 50 homes in the community, you own 1 50th of all the land versus owning the land right under your dwelling unit. Both of those things can impact your loan um, costs, sometimes by an eighth or a quarter of a point. So definitely consult your realtor and lender on that if you're looking at those types of homes. Number five, amenities and features. Essential amenities, um, what's important to you? Like a garage, backyard, swimming pool, specific appliances. What are your nice to haves versus must haves? Sometimes I'll have people say, I really want a three car garage, or I really want RV parking. Depending on your price point and where you're looking, it might be hard to find that. So definitely find out what your options are and see what you're willing to compromise on to get other things in a home that are important to you. Number six, energy efficiency and sustainability. Updated windows, insulation, solar panels, or energy efficient appliances can make a big difference in your energy costs. It's got a potential for long-term savings on your utility bills. Solar panels, that's a whole topic in and of itself. Most buyers do not want to pay for solar panels. And a lot of times sellers need to pay off 
um, an existing lien or loan on solar panels before the buyers will actually take possession of the house. If you've got a lease situation, sometimes with financing, sometimes buyers will take it over, especially when it's a competitive market. You have um, better options at getting those solar obligations taken over by buyers if you're a home seller. And if you're a home buyer, if you love a home and it's got the solar panels and you've got to have a monthly payment in it, it usually comes close to equating to the monthly cost of the energy. And sometimes it's less, so it might not be such a bad thing. Number seven, maintenance. Consider the age of the house, roof, appliances, and the systems like the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, as well as plumbing. How willing are you to do repairs or updates um, or upgrades with those costs? Me, as also a flipper, I've got great contractors and vendors that can help with any of those things that are needed. So if you are looking at an older home, you could get a better deal on that. And then someone like me can help you get those necessary updates and upgrades at really half price prices, and it could be well worth it to you. Number eight, resale value. While it's your future home, considering the property as an investment is wise. Look at historical data and future growth prospects for the area. You know, sometimes I have buyers that have bought homes um, that back to busy streets, and in one case, the five freeway. They bought a home that was literally across the street from the freeway. It went freeway, um, a sound wall, which was pretty good, a little street in their house. Like it was very, very close to the freeway. And I told them, this might be fine for you guys, but it could really hurt you on resale value. And they said, that's okay. It's a great deal. We love the house. We're doing it anyway. I even insisted that I show them five other homes um, in their price range just to make sure, because I would hate to have them come back and say, why didn't you tell us? But they've been happily living in that home five years and it's all worked out. And I don't think it was as bad as I thought it would be for them. They're fine with it. It still will hurt them on resale value, but at least they know. I always want my clients to be aware of potential pitfalls and problems. Number nine, lifestyle needs. What's the proximity to parks, gyms, social clubs, um, whatever it is that you like to do in your life, make sure that you've got it nearby. Do you like a quiet suburban environment or a more of a vibrant city, um, downtown type living? Here in South Orange County, it's pretty quiet and suburban, most places. Might be a little bit noisier near some of the freeways or busy streets, but overall, um, Orange County offers that quiet suburban lifestyle. Number 10, school districts. Even if you don't have kids or don't plan to have kids, it will impact your resale value potentially. So definitely check out the school district um, for resale, even if it's not something you need. Number 11, short term versus long term. Is this going to be your forever home or are you thinking you're going to move in a few years? So maybe you're willing to compromise more if it's not a forever home. And if it's just somewhere to live for a few years, maybe you don't need as many of your must-haves in it as you otherwise would. And number 12, your emotional connection. Beyond all these things we've talked about, how does it feel when you drive into the neighborhood, when you walk into the home, how does it feel to you? So make sure you make your list of needs and wants and review it with your realtor, discuss it with them, and make sure you're considering all of these details because I would hate to see you get into a home and have any kind of a regret. Thanks so much for watching. Definitely consult with me at my information below if I can be of help to you or anyone that's important to you in your life with any of their real estate needs. Thanks for watching.